Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to show you how to make homemade zebra cakes. And these are one of Joe's favorite treats of all time from his childhood. And they're just that, they're a treat. It's not like a big, beautiful cake. Um, they're just those little tiny things that I'm sure you remember from your childhood that he used to get as a treat with his grandmother. So I wanted to share this recipe because he asked me to make them homemade. And I did, and he loves them. And they're pretty awesome. The flavor is just so on point. You're gonna love it. I'm actually gonna share the ingredients for the filling um, in this case because the cake is already done and I'll explain that in just a minute. But right now, we need to work on the filling because it's really the most important part, the filling and the coating. So, for the filling, you will need some unsalted butter and some vegetable shorting at room temperature. This is some marshmallow cream, also known as marshmallow fluff. You are going to need some powdered sugar, a little bit of milk, and some vanilla extract. That's pretty much it. It's very simple and very easy. Now, I have all three of my creamy components in a bowl, and to it, I'm just gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract, and then using a handheld whisk, or you can do this in your um, not food processor, into your big, you know, your big, uh, what is that thing called? Mixer mommy brain. <laughs> you can just do it in the mixer with a paddle attachment, but this works just as well. I just need to cream these together for a couple of minutes. Now I'm going to just add my powdered sugar and a little bit of whole milk. And then just keep whipping it up until it's nice and creamy and fluffy and delicious and like an edible cloud. That is what you are looking for. Okay. I'm gonna set this aside so we can talk about cake. Now, what this is, is just a, you know, you can use a box of vanilla cake or you can use my homemade uh, vanilla cake mix. You just need the equivalent of a 15 ounce box. If you go to my website, and I will have it listed there for you along with the recipe, uh, what you need to actually make the cake, which is just three eggs, a half a cup of vegetable oil or butter, and a cup of uh, milk or water, and that's it. What you wanna do is you wanna mix it, and then you bake it on a um, baking sheet, like a cookie sheet, like this, because it needs to be quite thin. It only needs about 15 minutes at 350 degrees. I just grease the baking sheet with some nonstick spray, lay the bottom with parchment paper, and that's, done. that's done. Now, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of making a cake, what you can do is you can buy a pre-made vanilla cake and then just cut it to the size you're gonna need it, or you can even buy vanilla cupcakes if you can find unfrosted vanilla cupcakes and then just use those. That way you don't have to bother baking anything at all. But I mean, there's nothing easier for me to keep a, bi a big batch of vanilla cake mix on hand because I can whip up cookies, cakes, cupcakes, muffins, you name it, in the drop of a second. So. This was just baked at cool to room temperature. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pop the cake and the frosting in the fridge for about a half an hour. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm gonna bring them out and then we'll start um, cutting and filling and then making the coating and all that. It's gonna be pretty awesome. All right, my cake has chilled, my filling has chilled. Now what I've done is I've just taken the three inch cutter and just cut out little circles. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set that aside and then place my filling, which is really nice and thick at this point, and you want it to be, place that right into a little, um, what is this? This is a piping bag. You can also use like a resealable plastic bag if you want to. I just had it fitted with a plain, large, round tip, but really and truly, you don't even have to do that. If you don't want to, you can just snip off one of the corners, and it is good to go. Then kind of just push it down like so okay perfect and then you just take and it doesn't matter that they're not perfectly even your little circles it doesn't really matter save the extra cake by the way and i just do i'll show you just a couple you want to make sure that you fill just half of them and these are going to make i would say about seven to eight zebra cakes. I mean, you can see that they're pretty big. They're not very small. They're not the same size that you get, um, you know, that you get when you make, you know, when you buy them, but that's the beauty of things that are homemade, am I right? And then I just kind of start in the center and work my way to the edge. And then you just take your other little cake and you press on top like so. Let me show you like that and then you just continue now you're gonna have some leftover cake of course you're gonna be, be able to use it all don't throw it out you can do so many different things but did you know you can freeze 
cooked cake, like baked cake like this. And then when and if you want to, you can make cake pops. You can do, I mean, you can crumble it and make a trifle. I mean, there's no need for you to get rid of this because it's golden. You know what I mean? You've got yourself a nice cake. I mean, might as well put it to good use. That's all I'm saying. All right, my cakes are filled. Now what I'm gonna do is make the white chocolate coating. Now what you need is some white chocolate candy melts. I, ha I have tried to do this with regular white chocolate chips and it doesn't really work the same way. You need the white chocolate coating candy melts for that right texture. And then I have a little bit of vegetable shortening and I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave and just let it melt. I do it about 20 seconds at a time until it's fully melted. I don't like to let it go for a full minute or so, otherwise it, you can scorch certain sides of the bowl, of the chocolate in the bowl. So I just like to go for about 20 seconds at a time until it's fully melted. Perfect. I've divided it a little bit because I need this for the topping and I'll explain to you why in just a minute. Now, I've got a wire rack that I've sprayed with just a little bit of nonstick spray. I have that over a baking sheet that I've lined with aluminum foil. That way it's minimal cleanup. And then you just take each little cake carefully and I just do the sides. Okay, and place it on there like so. I'm just going to do five for now. And then you take this frosting, or the chocolate, and the reason I do it this way is because the when you roll the cake in the white chocolate, all of the crumbs from the cake end up kind of into the white chocolate. And if I were to just do it on the top, it, it doesn't look that appealing. I mean, that's pretty much the only reason. That's why I reserve some and then just wait to do it this way. And please don't panic if they're not perfect. Remember, you're making this from scratch. It's never going to be like perfect, like a factory, you know? Now, what you need to do, and these are big ones. I'm just going to make five for now and I have two others that my sister and Joe are going to eat without the uh, white chocolate. <laughs> I'm just going to let these sit aside until they're completely set. Well, until they're pretty set. And then we will work on the chocolate drizzle on the top. It really takes no time at all for these to set. So I'm just going to leave this here and then we'll come back to them. My cakes have set. Listen, you hear that? That's what you're looking for. Now what I have here is some semi-sweet or you can use bittersweet chocolate that I have melted with just a little bit more shortening. And all you're going to do Let's put this into the same thing, a plastic bag. I'm just using a resealable bag in this case. You don't need a lot. And then you just snip off a corner, like so. And then you just kind of go back and forth like so. And then I'll show you the trick that makes this really special in terms of just the way that it looks because although we don't care, it is fun. You tap and you see this, the chocolate starts to spread a little bit. It kind of becomes one with the coating. And now you just let this sit and your zebra cakes are done. I'm going to let those sit and then we'll cut it into one because why not? These have set completely, and now the reason why I sprayed my, non my, my rack with some nonstick spray is so that they lift easily, just like that. A little bit might still stick, but not as bad as if you hadn't uh, sprayed it with some nonstick spray or brushed it with a little bit of vegetable shortening, they would really stick, and then it's really hard to get them off. I'm just going to cut this in half because it is ginormous, but look at that. Ooh! These are really big though, so just saying. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. But so rich. They're honestly one. I think you could definitely share it with two people, if not more. Just because they are so rich, and trust me, if I say that you know that's gonna be the truth. Fabulous and so easy. And I know Joe loves them. Go to Laura and the Kitchen.com to get the written recipe. Mm. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. And I wanna, I wanna hear from you. 
Let me know down below some of your favorite childhood like snacky things that you used to buy at a convenience store because I'd love to be able to recreate them for you. I like to do you know, like little brownies and things like that. Just let me know specifically your favorites and I'll get working on them because I always love to hear what you like because it makes me feel like I'm connected to you. Go to LaraInTheKitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.